Welcome to the Open3D Engine YouTube channel and back to our Pong series. I'm Alex Demarjan, a technical trainer with the AWS Game Tech team. In the previous video, we created both our Pong level and our project. In this video, we'll explore O3DE's UI editor and begin the process of creating a simple start menu. One quick point before we begin, and this is in consideration of the open source nature of O3DE. The O3DE community is constantly making important updates to the engine, so please check back often for more O3DE related content. Thank you for watching and enjoy the video. Let's begin by clicking the arrow next to your add-on default environment entity. We can now see it has several nested entities located below it. Throughout future tutorials, we'll go into a bit more detail about each one of these, but for now, let's hide our shader ball since we won't be using it. Select the show hide entity icon next to your shader ball. Next, we want to make a simple start menu for our game. O3D has its own UI editor with a host of tools. In order to open this editor, click on the UI editor button in the taskbar at the top of the screen. Let's take a moment and explore the UI editor, which is used to create, customize, and animate various game user interface elements and components, such as menus, buttons, and heads-up displays. At the top, the toolbar contains commonly used tools and settings. Then, on the left side of the screen, we have the hierarchy panel, where you can view a list of UI elements that you create. Then, in the center, you have the UI Canvas tab bar, which is the tab display of open canvases. Below that, you have the viewport, which is a display of the UI elements on the current UI Canvas. Then on the right, we have the Properties panel, where you can view the component properties of the selected elements. At the bottom, we have the Animation Editor, which is a tool for animating UI elements. Now that we have a basic understanding of our interface, let's create an empty element. Towards the top left corner of the UI editor, you'll find a button labeled New. When clicked, a drop-down menu will appear with several options for creating or loading our own UI elements. In this tutorial, we'll be creating our own entities from scratch. So let's select the Empty Element option. You can now see that we have a new UI element in our hierarchy. We'll use this element to create a simple transparent background for our main menu. In the right-hand side, select the Add Component button. Then, in the drop-down menu, select the Image Component. In the center of our viewport, our component will appear. Let's edit it so that it takes up the entirety of our viewport. In the Anchor section, located within the Transform 2D component, click on the Fill Viewport Anchor button. This will expand our image so that it takes up the entirety of our center screen. Let's adjust the opacity of this image so that it gives our UI more of a layered effect. Within the Image component, change the value of our alpha to 0.5. You can see this cut our image's transparency in half. Next, let's create some text that will serve as instructions on how our player can start our game. Up at the top, let's again click on our new button and select empty element. In the right hand side, in our properties panel, let's locate the name text field. Here, we can change the name of our element. Let's change the name to text. Let's also rename our other element to background. Select your text element in the hierarchy. Then, in the properties panel, click on the add component button and add a text component. As you can see, having white text on a white background makes our text difficult to read. I'd like to keep the color of my text white, so let's change our background color to black. Select the background element in our hierarchy. Then, under the color section of our image component, click on the white color box, then select a dark color and click the OK button. For this game, we'll have the player start the game by pressing the Enter key. Let's notify the player of these instructions by altering the text on our text element to press Enter to start. The font size of our text is still a bit small to see, so let's change the font size to 50. Then, let's save our start menu to a place you can easily locate it. I named my start menu, start menu. Back in our editor, let's create the entity that will display our start menu. Right click in the entity outliner and select create entity. In the entity inspector, let's name this entity start menu. Then, click on the add component button. Select the UI canvas asset ref component. This component contains the functionality needed to display our start menu. Within it, locate the Select Files button, and in the Pick UI Canvas window, select your UI Canvas and click the OK button. We'd like our main menu to appear automatically when the game starts. We do this by checking the Load Automatically button located on our UI Canvas Ref component. Let's check out how our UI will look in-game. To run our game, either press the Ctrl plus G keys or the Play button in the upper right-hand corner. Now in play mode, you can see that our menu appears when we start our game. But there's one other thing we'd like to change. When moving our mouse around, our in-game camera moves with it. This is due to the fly camera input component on our camera. To exit play mode, either press the escape key or click the play button again. Select your camera from the entity outline here. And on the fly camera input component, check off the is initially enabled button. Now you can see when we rerun our game, when we move our mouse, the camera does not rotate with it. In this video, we created a simple start menu for our game. In the next tutorial, we'll explore the process of scripting our start menu. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.